only got in this morning, um, but uh, been to St Andrews many times, so uh, kind of know what to expect. But uh, you know, I'm sure this week has a different atmosphere than than normal. Um, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to getting out there, seeing the golf course this afternoon, and um, yeah, seeing how it's looking. Excellent. Now, just a little bit of housekeeping. If you can um, please remember to use a microphone for your questions, that'd be great. Who's going to lead us off? No one. Louine, thank you. <laughs> right, Matt, you told us the other day that you won a junior thing here. So let's hear about the atmosphere when you won your junior thing. Did you have to make a speech or how did it go? Uh, I think so. I can't really remember it. Um, yeah, there wasn't much atmosphere. There was literally my mum, dad and our dog watching. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and um, what were your scores? Oh, I can't remember. It was my, it was like two round stroke play, um, one round the Eden, one round the New, and then uh, if you got if you qualified top thirty two or something, you came to play the old course or so match play on the old course. So um, yeah, it was just all match play. Okay, well I've started it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just here. Thank you. So um, how many matches would you have had to win then, Matt, after that? So two rounds of stroke play, then how many match play? I want to say that it was like three, I think. Um, I think it was actually only top 16 that qualified, so I don't know what the maths is on that. But, um, yeah, I think I only played three three matches, and then I played the following year as well, um, lost in the final. So. So a pretty good record around here already. Well, only when I was a junior, since <laughs> I played the Dunhill and it's not been so good, so... <laughs> and you, um, you told us last week that um, your idea of perfect preparation for a major was to, would be to play pretty well, but not exactly perfect, and then for it just to click this week. Was Scotland last week a pretty good preparation? Yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, it, it was really. I, the, the golf course... Um, you know, it is different to here. It's it was playing firmer and faster than than what it has done in previous years, um, but I think you know the the way that I played was kind of there thereabouts. Um, other than what day? Other than Friday, I never really got going. Um, early on, sort of Sunday, made a bo made a birdie, made a bogey, birdie, bogey. So just ne just never really got going uh, over the weekend and. To be honest, I was, you know, I was surprised that two level pars kind of kept me at six. To be honest, um, so you know, walking off Sunday, I was I was happy with the result. Rui, thanks. Um, Matt, how did it feel teeing up uh, for the first time competitively last week? Did you get a sense, a different feeling as a major champion? Um, I think for me. The, I'll be honest, like I was a little bit apprehensive, you know, where's my game at? Um, you know, the golf last week, you know, Lynx golf is, is quite drastically different to what we played at the US Open and what we play year round. You know, it's, uh, it is very different form of golf. Um, so that was also kind of something that was, um, I was apprehensive about. Um, but I felt like I was pleased with the way I played day one. Um, you know, the draw was a big factor last week. Um, and particularly day two played really, really well. So to me, I was kind of laughing to to my friends and I was kind of saying, oh, you know, I'm just happy that I've still kind of got it a little bit, you know. So, um, but I, 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 yeah, I was, I was pleased with the week, the, the way I finished. And, and like I said, I was, I was more surprised than anything that, that my scores over the weekend kind of kept me, kept me where I was after Friday. Please. Matt, the um, of course the atmosphere you were able to create at Brookline uh, contributed a lot to your success. Are there things you're trying to replicate um, this week? Yeah, unfortunately the Fultons couldn't make it. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not really. I mean, I'm staying in a house with um, mum and dad, um, manager Ted, and uh, I had a chef at Brookline, and, and he's been to a few events this year. He'll be here as well. So um, just kind of keep keep things the same um kind of last week i was just basically on my own i stayed on site um and it was quite boring to be on my own to be honest i, I normally like my own company but it was a little bit boring 
Um, so this week it's kind of nice to sort of get back to that uh, and be similar. But, um, you know, in terms of the week as a whole, it'll just be kind of the same deal uh, of preparation and, um, you know, normal routines, just trying to get back to the normal routines that, um, that I, have, I have done all year, really. Okay. Thank you. Matt, what are your thoughts when you step to the 17th tee, and could you talk about how difficult and unique that hole is from tee to green? Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic hole. Um, you know, you, you've got to... I would say that you, you've just got to have confidence in, in your start lines, where, you, where you're aiming off the tee. Um, you know, from, what, from memory, it's, it's one of the letters on the hotel, I think, is the line. Um, so you just got to commit to that. Uh, I think it's really important to kind of get where your right edge of the fairway is i.e. where the out of bounds is. Um, I think that's important. Then you, you kind of know um, where, you, where your widths are, where your dispersion is. Um, and then, you know, that, the second shot is so, so important that you, you hit the fairway to at least give yourself a chance of bouncing it up short um, and, and staying on the green. Um, you know, everyone knows left in the bunker's dead, missing the green right is dead, short is the safest bet but it's not easy from there um you know it's just a it's just a tough hole um so i'm not sure where the wind's going to be playing this week but you know i played it before when it's been into the wind i've hit four iron in there um i don't know where it's forecast but if it is down it will be a little bit easier hopefully um but uh it is just a it's a tough hole and particularly if you've got a lead coming into there you, you know it's uh it sort of really puts pressure on No, I think I, I maybe I've been on the road once, or, or no, maybe not the road. I think just oh, just rolled off the right edge down into the onto the bottom there. But um, no, I, I wouldn't say I've played it enough to um, to have it. Thank you. Hey Matt, um, there's been a, a lot of thought that this course is going to be extremely gettable this week because of the weather forecast. I'm cu curious what your take is on that. Um, because of the fact there's so many younger, longer hitters here. And, and as a follow, how many of these par fours in, in calm condition are drivable for you? Yeah, I've, like I say, I've not played the golf course for, for a couple of years now. Um, obviously, when I've played it, it's been in October, so it's been soft um, or softer. And, and right now, I think from what I'm hearing, it's been it's very firm. Um, and I think I mentioned last week that spoke, speaking to Billy, you're looking at four, five, maybe six that are, that are drivable. Um, again, you know, that's, like you say, calm conditions. Uh, that's that's probably a, a bit of a guess from my side, but um, that definitely changes uh, the dynamic of the golf course. And, and you know, someone asked Billy today, what does he think the winning score is? And uh, I'm, like, pretty oblivious with, with most golf history. And he was telling, you know, I think... Louis won on minus 15, someone won on 18, someone won on 16 or something. So I was taken aback by how low the scores were. Like, I didn't think it would be that low. So, you know, I think with it being firm and par four is more gettable, um, it, it could be it could be a low one as well that, that wins, weather, weather permitting. What was the number? 18, which to me I was like, that's slow. <laughs> David. Yeah, Matt, you've been uh, away uh, for so long in America this time. Just wondered if there was almost a period of adjustment coming back. And uh, in golfing terms, when you were at Renaissance, we, we made a lot of your longer hitting. Were you actually hitting different clubs to when you played it last year? Um, yeah, we had, we, I think we had like an opposite wind all week th this past week at, at Renaissance. So there was a lot of holes that were... Um, I feel like the wind switched every every day last year, um, but some of the holes played really really short this year, um, and I was definitely hitting you know it was firmer as well. So, but I was definitely hitting a lot less club than than normal. Um, so that that was nice. Um, and what was the other, sorry? What was your it first? Was, uh, the, the amount of time you've been away has it been difficult oh. to be British again? Yeah, it has been a little bit to be honest. Yeah, I mean talk purely golf. Um, it, it has been a little bit. Um, just kind of particularly last week I, I struggled into the wind um, 
I just didn't hit many. I didn't didn't hit good shots into the wind, and and that was, you know, when when you're out of it for so long, hitting off the turf and and having such a strong wind, it's kind of takes some getting used to and, and some practice just to hit those shots again to control your ball. Um, I, I didn't do that very well at all last week. Uh, you know, it's something that I, I've told Mike that I want to work on this week. We did done a little bit this morning, but you know, there's not a, not a breath out there really at the minute. Um, and so all we kind of did was just get some numbers and seeing whether I'm spinning it too low or too high and uh, every, everything seemed fine. So unfortunately, it was my fault, not my club's fault. Um, so it's something that we'll just keep an eye on for the rest of the week. Um, but definitely something that I, you know, I need to get right before, before Thursday. Question here, please. Matt, what, what will it mean to be part of the celebration in, in history here this week at the 150th Open? Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's my my first Open at St Andrews, um, so you know, I wouldn't say it's one of my favourite golf courses, um, but to experience it in an Open, it is you know it's amazing. It's uh, it, it's definitely one that I watched growing up. Um, you know, I didn't really watch much golf growing up. It'd be Ryder Cup, the Masters, and and the Open, to be honest. Um, and you know it was always held in in high esteem when it comes to St Andrews. So um, I, I love the area, and um, you know I think this week with it being the Open here and, and my first one, I'm, I'm definitely going to enjoy it. Alex, yeah, Matt, when you played in this junior thing, I don't even remember when that was, but <laughs> last <what>? year, <laughs> last year. <laughs> well, congratulations, Thanks. then. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Can you just talk about what St. Andrews meant to you back then and how, it's, how your understanding or love of it has evolved? Yeah, I'll be honest. Back then I was, you know, blown away. It was like, wow, St. Andrews, the old course, it's incredible. Ge genuinely, you know, I was so excited. I, I really wanted to make the match play just to play the golf course. Um, and, you know, that was probably when I was younger, playing amateur golf, playing more links golf. That was kind of what we did in the UK was we played more Lynx style golf courses and you get used to that. Um, but I've always, my personal favorite golf courses have always been, you know, regular Parkland, Tree Lined, Harbour Town, Augusta, Brookline. Um, so that style of golf. So I've kind of grow, grown out of en enjoying Lynx. Like um, I enjoy the, the challenge of it, you know, when it's windy and it's hard and you've got to grind, but like if it's still and calm, that I don't, I don't particularly enjoy playing that because you know you, you, I don't think it's, I mean, it's still hard, but I feel like when it's when it's, I've said it a lot, when it's really hard, it's harder for everyone else, and that's kind of why I enjoy the challenge more, I guess. Um, I was gonna say, and do you think that gives you an advantage when it is harder? I, I, yeah, I like to think so. Yeah, I, I just prefer I just prefer it like that. Um, when you've got to dig in and and just just grind out a score, um, whether it's you know level par, two under, five over, whatever it is. Great one. So, so I mean, before this year, you were kind of maybe under the radar, and this year, you've been behind the mic a lot. Are you embracing this attention? Is something that is helping you or would you wish not to be here so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know i said i said to a few people like last week that before i i won a major it was you know i see the other guys doing press conferences and doing media and doing that sort of stuff and, and i'm like you know that's what that's what i want i want to be part of that and i want to do that um and and now it's happened it's kind of like oh it, it's quite a lot you know it's a lot to take in um and it's definitely different, and you know, uh, I spoke about it already. You got to manage your time differently, and and even better than before, um, because you got more people wanting your time, and 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 you got to you got to balance that. But um, you know, I'm I'm in, I'm enjoying it so far. It's um, at the end of the day, I, I got to do whatever's right for me and my golf. So if I have to do less of this and and make sure that my golf's okay, then that that's what I'll have to do. But like I say, it's just trying to find the balance with it at the minute. and um, Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it for now. And, and one quick thing, you mentioned you have a chef. It looks like more of you have a chef now. 
How does it work for you? Does he cook your favorite things every day? <laughs> or is it more like a structure and balance? No, and try it, to it is a structure, yeah, it's a structure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I work with the nutritionist as well, so it's kind of like, you know, it's all planned out. Great, we have time for these final two questions, so we'll start here. Matt, how do you sort of reflect on your open record to date and how sort of those experiences can help you this week? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say my open record is great at all. Um, I think my best finish 2019 at Port Rush, is that right? Is that when it yeah. was? Um, yeah, it's funny. I think, I'll be honest, since since I turned pro, obviously we play much less Lynx golf. Um, I feel like I've got worse in the wind since I've turned pro, just because we don't play in as well. Not worse in the wind, worse on links and wind. Um, you know, other golf courses in wind I've played fine, but I feel like coming back here, you know, like David said, it's taken time just to get used to it and um, where to land it, how to fly it. You know, we're not put under that test as regularly out in regular events because either there's no wind or it's softer and, and you can just fly it to a certain spot. So, um, Obviously, I'd like to improve on, on my record, and, and I feel like, you know, I've obviously been playing much, much better since um, since the last Open that I played. So it's just, you know, trying to do more of the same this year and, and like I say, just fix a couple of things from last week and, and hopefully take it into this week. And our final question over here, please. Yeah, Matt, uh, you got a nice message of congratulations from Padre Carrington on Twitter after you won the US Open talking about hard work and perseverance, and when you hear that from Padraig Harrington, it sort of says a lot. Have you had much inspiration from Padraig over the years, much advice? I think after the 2013 Open, I remember him coming off the course after his round, and he just wanted to know what you'd shot, as far as I recall. <laughs> I you didn't might, know that. You <laughs> might have been just ahead of him, maybe. Just wondering have you, what kind of interactions and inspiration has Padraig given you over the years, and any stories regarding that? Yeah, I, I've played with... Padraig a few times over the course since I've turned pro. Um, I really enjoy his company. He's a, he's a great man. You know, the work that he puts in is incredible. You know, his, his ball speed is what he's obsessed with nowadays, and it's incredible how, how fast he's got. But um, for me, the biggest thing that I would love to take from him is is just his attitude towards the game. It's, you know... He could tell you himself, and I spoke to Ronan and his caddy about it before. He could hit it 500 yards offline, and and you'd never know it happened, you know. And that that to me is is I think is his biggest strength is he just moves on um, straight from straight onto the next shot. That's what he's focused on, and um, you know that's that's why he's been such a good player, and and he's a multiple major winner. Just as a follow up to that, how much of your U.S. Open winnings would you bet on him not winning this week? <laughs> It's not very nice, is it? <laughs> well, hopefully all of it, because I'm going to beat him. <laughs> right, well, on that lovely positive note, yeah. we'll say thank you very much for your time, Matt. Thanks. We wish you the best of luck this thank week. Thank you.